name is Monk Rowe, and we're filming today on behalf of Hamilton College Jazz Archive. We are attending the LA Classic Jazz Festival and are really pleased today to be with fine pianist and well-known jazz figure Gerald Wiggins. Hi. It's pleased, uh, pleased to meet you and glad to finally find an hour to, I know you're a busy man, and well. uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you. You're a East Coast man transplanted to the West? That's about it, yes. How did that come about? Well, um, I was uh, working with an uh, old-time comedian, Step and Fetch It. Step and Fetch It. You remember him? I'm, you probably don't. I like the name. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, we were at, working at the Brooklyn Strand, and there was a West Coast band back in this show by the name of Les Height. Okay. Well, as it went, uh, the Army took Le Les Height's piano player, and Step had a little problem that uh, he had to talk to the police about, so he disappeared. <laughs> so Les said to me, uh, you don't have a boss, and I don't have a piano player. How would you like to go to California? Uh -huh. So I was young and crazy. I said, great. And this, how old were you then? I must have been just about 18 then, or just, just out of high school. Yeah. It, it's so interesting to hear mm -hmm. um, the ages that that a lot of uh, folks we've talked to have started at. What kind of, uh, just to step back once, what kind of piano playing did you do for Steppen? Well, I was mostly part of his act. Yeah. I had played some things and I had to help him with a uh, few little things he did, like uh, he said, help me with this coat. And I'd put it up to his shoulder and he said, the hand down there, and I had to drop it down and put it on the hand. It was really, you know, cornball stuff. <laughs> yeah. with that. It made him yeah. a millionaire, so what can I say? Then you traveled around doing little shows? Uh, we didn't do too many. I didn't stay with him that long. I think we made uh, maybe about four or five weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, we went as far as Anderson, Indiana, and came right back. At that time, uh, uh, everything was weekend uh, shows, uh -huh. you know, little towns. Yeah. Friday and Saturday, and that was it. And was this was after you went to the, um, isn't there a high school in New York? Oh, high School of Music and Art, yeah. 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 Well, after I graduated, I graduated in 1940. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Did you have a good experience there? Was that a, at that time, did the Music you, and Art? Yeah. It's fantastic. Oh, it was something new. Um, we got Mayor LaGuardia to thank for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only hang-up was that most of the students that went there were piano players, so we all had to take another instrument. I picked up the bass violin, stupid me. <laughs> I used to carry it home yeah. every night and bring it back the next morning, oh, but I got tired of that too. I'll bet. But uh, that was a great education. Uh, we had, you know, regular school subjects, you know, history and math and all the rest of it, right. but uh, you had to keep up your grades in that too, out you go. But uh, I got a chance to actually play in the symphony orchestra and uh, some great music, things I never would have had a chance to play. Uh -huh. So, uh, and uh, Benny Goodman used to come up with the trio every Friday. That was nice. At yeah. the, and play at the school? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That was a big treat. When you could get in, because it would be packed. You know? uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, it was quite a school. Great. And um, there was a certain amount of, you learned at that point to read music, but you were, you must have developed your ear very quickly. Oh, no, my mother had me taking lessons when I was about four years old. Oh, okay. And I played classical music till I was 16 or 17. Mm -hmm. I found out I couldn't make a dime doing it, so. Yeah. It just was the wrong time. Uh-huh. So I just gravitated to jazz. Yeah. And uh, it's been good to me, and I can't complain at all. Right. What kind of experience did you have uh, during the war years? Oh, I was. Lovely. I was in uh, Fort Lewis, Washington from 1944 to 46, and uh, I was in a special service unit, and we didn't have to do too much except play for the parades on Saturday. Mm -hmm. The rest of the time I was in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> what did you play for the parades? Big pardon? What did you play for the parades? They didn't win. Oh, I played glockenspiel oh, sometime, okay. or I'd yeah. take a clarinet out, uh -huh. or a trombone. I had a working knowledge of them, you know. Yeah. I wasn't good at it, but I could fake it pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. And in yeah. Seattle, when you were still in the service, what was going on? There oh, I had a play? job then, yeah. yeah. I had a steady job. I worked with a saxophone player by the name of 
Tootie Boyd, who has passed on since then, but uh, we used to drive down to Portland for a job, and I had some jobs in Seattle on uh, Jackson Street, which was the hot street in Seattle at that time. Mm -hmm. So uh, I made more outside of the Army than I did in the Army. Yeah. The, uh, today, we think of a, a gig as usually 9 to 1, 10 to 2, sometimes less than that. What was, what was a typical night like back then? Well, when I was working, uh, uh, I had a gig in uh, Greenwich Village, and that was 8 at night to 4 in the morning. Lord. And then I started working uptown at Monroe's Uptown House, and we'd go to work about 11.30 and get off at daylight. But that was all right yeah, with me because uh, huh? uh, all I'd do was go up the hill and go to school. My first class was 7.30, so I was in business. I'd play all night wow. and sleep in school all day. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, how can you handle that? Well, no, my history teacher moved out here. She pulled the cover off me. She told my wife, she says, yeah, I often wonder why Jerry was so sleepy in class. I found out. <laughs> <laughs> he was a working man already. That's yeah, great. Well. And the atmosphere in New York at that time was... Oh, New York was, was great. Pretty happy. Yeah, because... Right? Especially for a youngster, you know, trying to learn the uh, music business, because the older guys would show you everything. You know, whatever you ask them, you couldn't do it, but they show you. Yeah. You know, I know I asked Tatum several times to show me certain things. He said, well, "Jerry, brrr. I said, thanks." Slow motion, <laughs> please. <laughs> but Art got me the gig with Stephen Fetcher. Yeah. You know, yeah, he got me my first gig. Were yeah. were um, was the average piano player intimidated by Art Tatum? No, they, they just wish he'd go away, <laughs> you know. Uh, but one guy told me, he says, Wig, don't worry about Art Tatum. He says, as much as he plays, he can only be in one place at one time. <laughs> yeah. He can't work all the he gigs all at once, so you're safe, yeah. which makes sense. Right. That's well, Art was really a sweetheart. He was uh -huh. a nice man, except he didn't want to talk music. He wanted to talk baseball. No kidding. You know, he could tell you the average of Ty Cobb or anybody years before, you know and how much they batted and what they did and all that. Uh -huh. He was a good pinochle player, too. <laughs> Interesting. You have accompanied along the way some great singers, too. Is that Yeah, I've been with uh, Lena Horne, Dinah Washington, K-Star. I even was with uh, Dinah Shore one night. <laughs> Dinah Shore <laughs> yeah. one night. And, uh, I see who else. Uh, so many I forget yeah. most of them, yeah. Did you ever have cross paths with uh, Joe Williams? Oh, I see Joe all the time. Every time yeah. he comes to LA, he usually yeah. hires my trio, yeah. Yeah, great. What's Because his like? piano player doesn't want to make the trip out here, uh -huh. so I get the job, which is yeah. you know, great, great for me. What's it like working with Joe? The easiest job on earth. Yeah. But I don't have to play his regular stuff. You know, when he's working with his piano player, they have all this stuff set up. But when he comes out here, he says, Wake, don't worry about it. The blues. And we do the blues and any all kind of keys. <laughs> yeah. We play a, do a ballad now and then, yeah. you know. But uh, yeah. it's very easy working for him. That's interesting. Uh, you know, the, the non-jazz musician always finds it fascinating when, if you watch them and they say, B flat. And, that's all the band needs. Oh, yeah. You know, that's that's the great thing about, one great thing about well, this Well, you're supposed music. to know the tunes, you know. Yeah. That's another thing. For this type of festival, too, when you watch the bands up there, and you really got to have a repertory in your head of tunes because it, some of them are the stab, groups that work all together all the time, so someone turns around and says, you know, this particular tune, you better know e it. flat, <laughs> and you better know it. Uh, any key they call, you're supposed to be able to play it. Yeah. When did you start doing some, uh, you did some vocal coaching in the studio? I did a little of it, yeah. yeah. How'd you get uh, into that? And was uh, that the... People would call me since I'd worked with Lena and all the different people, they think I knew something about singers. <laughs> so I believed them too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and yeah. you um, would do that for, for the studios? Oh no, the only person I really coached in the studio was Marilyn Monroe. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I got the job through uh, Jackie Mills, who used to be a drummer with uh, Tommy Dorsey. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had in with uh, Jack Cole, the choreographer. So he took me out of the studio one day, and Jack Cole liked what I did. So every time Marilyn did a musical, I was there. Yeah. I read that it took her a lot of takes to get in films 
sometimes. Is that true? Was well, that she wasn't a singer per se, you know, yeah. but she worked hard at it. Yeah. And uh, Jack Cole changed her style so much. He gave her things to do that she could half talk and half sing. Mm. So it came off pretty good for her. Did yeah. you do a, involved in Some Like It Hot, that some, movie? Yeah, but that was, in, uh, that was mostly... Um, was it Jack Lemon? Who was in that? Jack Lemon and, yeah, and Tony uh, Curtis. Tony Curtis, yeah. yeah. And I didn't have too much, too much to do in that, but I was in uh, Lay Girls. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? Let's Make Love. Oh, about five or six of them. Yeah. I think I read you worked with Spike Jones. Yeah, well, that happened. That's right. I was working with Spike's wife, Helen Graco. Uh huh. And uh, Spike's piano player, uh, Arnold Ross, became ill. So. Uh, Spike asked Helen, could he uh, borrow me for a while? Mm -hmm. So I went on the road with the Spike Jones band, and that was a trip. <laughs> I said, this crazy music this ought to be fun to play. I think the first tune was Poet and Peasant, for real. You know, so if you couldn't read, you were in a whole lot of trouble. Fortunately, I could yeah, read, but some, it was tough music. You had to be good to play. And everything was timed to the second. Uh huh. And there was no goofing on that gig, believe me. Spike was, he's a funny man, but he was a taskmaster too, you yeah. know, you had to do it. I remember the first time I went to his home, uh, I walked in there, there was a picture of a blue boy with Spike's head on top of it, which cracked me up, but then the next picture was Whistler's mother with the racing form in her lap. <laughs> <laughs> that was Spike oh. all the way. He used to go to uh, all the dog kennels uh, when we were, you know, traveling and tape the dogs bark and everything, he put a record together of uh, memories are made of uh, things like this or something. Yeah. He put all those dogs, and there was dogs barking this too, it was fantastic. What an imagination. Yeah. Oh, he was something else, he was fantastic, yeah. I really loved him. Yeah, and we listen to that stuff now, and you know, you remember that it was done without any studio tricks. Oh yeah, no, that was just, just you know, him live editing and put it together, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. The um, Had some hot players, though, to pull that Oh, that stuff yeah, off. he had George Rock, who was a fantastic trumpet player mm -hmm. and a uh, tenor player, Gail Burnell. Uh, he's still around. Uh, he called me a couple of years ago. He'd been on the same job out here for about 30 years. Mm -hmm. I wonder what happened to him, you know. Yeah. And uh, and it was Mousy and uh, oh, what was the little midget's name? Oh, I remember uh, from the, the TV shows they did, that guy running out on stage. Oh, yeah. The small one. Yeah, Billy Barty. Uh-huh. Yeah, he was there. Yeah, Spike had quite a show. And what kind of venue, what, what, where would you play with him, and what kind of setting? Oh, it? we did all the college gyms. <laughs> college in the, gyms. Yeah, in yeah. the middle of winter. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was something else. It wasn't bad. I yeah. had a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, You've had some, some nice albums on your own. Who who are the guys that you like to play with? Is anybody special nowadays? Oh, uh, now I use uh, Paul Humphrey on drums and Andy Simpkins on bass. Mm -hmm. But on occasion I use Sherman Ferguson and uh, other guys. You know, yeah. this town is full of good drummers, and bass players. Yeah. So you never had a loss for you know a good rhythm section. Mm -hmm. What kind of uh, traveling? in other parts of the world have you been able to do? Oh, when I was uh, with singers, I did quite a bit of traveling, especially with Helen Humes. Uh, we used to go to Europe every year uh, for George Ween. Mm -hmm. But she passed away and I guess it was 81. So I don't go out too much now. If I go out, it's for a couple of days or so. You know, not, I don't want anything steady. I had enough of steady work. Yeah, and, uh, I'm glad to hear that you can take what you want. <laughs> That's, well, not so much that. I just, I'm an old man now. I can't, <laughs> can't stand that gaff anymore. Yeah. And you've been in L.A. for how long? You know, a long time? Well, I, like I said, I first got out here in 1940, but I didn't stay then. Mm -hmm. But uh, the weather got to me. It was Christmas Day and 100 degrees here. And in New York, it was like, you know, ice, snow, and everything yeah. else. I immediately called my mother and said, I found God's country. Don't look for me in New York anymore. <laughs> I went back naturally, but uh, when yeah. I got a chance to settle here, I did. Yeah. All right. Um, what do you think of the state of uh, jazz today? Is, is that a... Uh, <coughs> it's the same as it's always been. Uh, youngsters coming up with new ideas. Right. You know, I know uh, when... Uh, 
I'm from more or less the Bop era, and the older guys didn't understand what we was doing, and we didn't know what we were doing either. But we were doing you something, you know. Yeah. It evolved into Bop. Well, the kids are doing the same thing now. They want their own voice and their own sound, and that's what they're doing. Now you can either like it or not like it, but it's here and it's not going to go away. Yeah. If you don't like it, you don't have to listen yeah, to so, it. So well, right? yeah, but uh, I found out you have to listen to find out what they're doing, and uh, it's. It's new, so it's strange. Yeah. So you have to get used to, you know, really give it a good listen and find out what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I know the first time I heard Bob, well, I'd been around Dizzy quite a bit. So I, he was just getting it together, you know, with the flat fives and raised nights. And nobody really knew what he was doing. And he used to drive little trumpet players crazy. Mm -hmm. I was working in a place called Mon uh, Monroe's Uptown House. We had two trumpet players, uh, Vic Coulson and George Treadwell, who later married uh, Sarah Vaughan. They bought themselves a couple of cornets, and it was terrible to hear them try to play like this. I mean, they were in bad shape. <laughs> but they tried. Yeah. Wasn't that the place where um, Thelonious Monk was doing some of that early? No, he, that was um, uh, downtown. I was 100 and no, it was, uh, oh, what was the name of that joint? But uh, Monroe's Uptown House was in Harlem, mm -hmm. uh, about 134 from the 35th Street. But the place you're talking about, how can I forget it? Mitt That's where Monk, Mittens, Mittens, Mittens Playhouse, okay. yeah. Okay, all right. That's where Monk yeah. was. Yeah. Did you notice when, when jazz moved from the swing era, I guess, into, into the bop, bop became more popular, was there a, a loss of, of audience? Or did that affect your your career at all? I mean, no, the music I, changed drastically after World War II. Am I, I know, but uh, no, it didn't bother me. I I joined Benny Carter about that time. And I was kidding. I said, are we going to start playing Bop? And he said, well, you played it already. I said, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Benny Carter had a big influence on my career because uh, uh, he's a superhuman guy. That guy is unbelievable. So many people have he said could, uh, that. He can write, he can play, and he's a nice man, which helps yeah. a lot, you know. Yeah. What's, uh, what's in your future for uh, doing a lot of these? Do these festivals quite often? Or yeah, I yeah. do them, yeah. I do them in Sarasota, New Jersey, you name it. Uh huh. But this is easy. You do a couple of days, three days at the most, and come home, you know. Right. This time I'm home, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. But uh, they're fun, you know, and they pay the bills. Right. And it's not like sitting on a steady job working, you know, from 9 to 1 or 9 to 2 every mm -hmm. night. That I couldn't do anymore for yeah. no amount of money. It just, you It's know, a long, it's a long day. Uh, I'm just stuck here that way. You know, I can't even stay in a club a week. I get antsy after one or two days and yeah. I want out. The, um, <coughs> pardon me. Did you ever get in a position, um, either in the studio or where someone asked you to play any electronics, electronic pianos or anything like uh, that? Not really. I remember my first rhythm and blues uh, record date. The guy said, okay, Wiggy, now we're going to do this tune. I'm all set, you know, I'm full of the ginger and I'm ready to show him what I knew. He said, okay, now, right here, I want you to play a bad chord. So I reached out, you know, I said, I'm going to shock him with this. And I played this chord. He says, no, I want you to play like you don't know anything about the piano and you got gloves on. I mean, a bad chord. That was my first and last rock and roll date. Wow, whose session was that? I forget, remember? it's been so long ago, but yeah. I said, you know, you know, he really wanted me to play like I didn't know how to play the piano. I felt insulted. Well. <laughs> Here's all and, you put all that time into learning yeah. how to. They never called me again, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> what was your definition when you went to play that bad chord? Do you remember what kind of thing you might have played? Oh, I was trying to play a polytonal type thing, uh -huh. you know. One and one, yeah. one and the other, yeah. But he wasn't, wasn't having any of that. He wanted me to play like I didn't know what the piano was for. Oh. And I was really crushed, you know. We've had a couple people talk about reacting to what producers wanted, you know. Yeah, well, they, they're looking for something. They're looking for something that sells, you mm -hmm. know. 
So as he said, I, don't, I want you to act like you never, you don't know what the piano's for. Just, you know, just hit something. Wow. Can you, uh, you have any stories, uh, road stories that you can share with I us? I can't tell them, no. <laughs> I can't even write a book about them. <laughs> they don't translate onto film, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, no. My lips are sealed, believe yeah. me. How about the, how about the, the, the best road experience you had? either with uh, Les Hyde or anybody from... Well, I had fun with all the gigs I had with the mm -hmm. singers and the bands, you know. Yeah. Uh, it was good times, bad times. Yeah. Uh, I think the worst time I had when I joined Louis Armstrong. I joined Louis out here, and uh, we made uh, 51 nighters all through the South. And at that time, the South was pretty bad. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, two weeks before we got to New York, I put in my notice, you know. I loved the band and everything, but I just couldn't stand the, what we were going through. It wasn't very nice. Anyhow, we got to New York, and I was home about three or four days, and Benny Carter called me. He says, uh, Wig, you want to go take a trip to the West Coast? I said, yeah. I said, you're not going south, are you? He said, oh, no, don't, don't even think about that. Yeah. I got on the train with Bumps Myers, and I went to sleep. When I woke up, I was in Macon, Georgia. I'd like to die. Oh! I gave him my notice right then and there. And he said, okay. And that was the end of it. And J.J. Johnson and Max Rose, they said, well, wait, come on, you know. So a couple of days later, I went to Benny. I said, about that notice I gave you, I'd like to take it back. He said, what notice? <laughs> I said, oh, okay. Was there a difference in that tour than with, with, with Louis? Oh, we didn't stay there. Oh, okay. Uh, Manny wasn't about to stay down you there. Were just you kind know, of passing. Yeah, we passed passing through. through. Yeah. Oh, that's that's too bad. I guess um, Louis went down in the south quite a bit, though, didn't he? he well, that was his territory. Yeah. But it sure wasn't mine. Yeah. Yeah. What was it like musically working with him? Well, I never knew because with Louis, we just played a gig and get out of town. You know, yeah. you really didn't have a chance to meet anybody by the time you got there it was time to play when you finished you packed up and you know yeah. on to the next town we were making like 500 mile jumps every night wow so it was uh, a little rough mm -hmm. any chances to go overseas with uh, some of the singers and oh yeah uh, i my first time overseas was with lena horn that was 1950. that was a ball because i got a chance to play the london palladium you know that was mm -hmm. to me really something wow and we traveled all over Europe. We went to Spain, uh, Sweden, Klockenzoot, uh, uh, wherever that is, in Belgium, I guess. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was a ball. Yeah. And then when I joined Helen Humes, we used to go over every year with uh, George Wien's uh, mm -hmm. jazz thing. So I spent a lot of time in Europe. Yeah. And I have a lot of friends over there. Helen Humes, um, was that, that was, she was with Basie for a while, wasn't she? Yeah, she was, was with Basie. Band. Yeah. Now, she could have tell you some things about Basie and the band. Yeah. Uh, you would have loved to talk to her. <laughs> Too bad she's gone. Uh-huh. Was the Basie band something that you that you listened to off and on? And, um, how, we've looked, talked with some people about the sound of their rhythm section. Was that something that... Oh, they had a tight rhythm section. Yeah, yeah they were together. You don't find that anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with Papa Joe Jones and whoever the current bass player was, and Basie and Freddie on guitar, Jesus. Can't do any better Couldn't than that. Couldn't beat that. Yeah, they, uh, they had a thing going. Uh-huh. Yeah, but uh, bands are not like that today. They're not... Well, to have a band like that, the piano player's got to be the leader, you know, and to keep a rhythm section together. Most of the days now, uh, trumpet players, saxophone mm -hmm. players, and uh, they don't stress that as much. Yeah. Well, we've uh, enjoyed talking with you very much. If you have any last uh, things you'd like to say that I haven't thought of, I'd be... Well, uh, if you see my friend Alan Tenney, tell him hello. I think he's in uh, Buffalo now. Mm, that's not far from us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, he's a guy who would have some good stories for you about New York. Okay. Well, Tenney and Bud Powell and myself, mm -hmm. that's another thing. We won't go into that. You get that from him. Okay. Okay. <laughs>
Well, on behalf of the Hamilton College Jazz Archive, we'd like to thank Gerald Wiggins for this time together and hope that your uh, next festival is, is a lot of fun and, mm -hmm. and thanks for your time. Fine, all right. Okay.